Mariah Carey's ex-husband, Tommy Mottola, is actually at the centre of the beef between Carey and Jennifer Lopez. There are rivalries, but I don't think she has anything to do with me. I don't have a feud against her at all. Um, Hi, is it true that Ashanti sung J-Lo's vocals in the beginning of her career? <gasps> Once someone goes after you and attacks you and um, intentionally tries to consistently hurt you, you have to protect yourself. Mariah Carey says that she doesn't know who J-Lo is, but there's no way that's true, because when Mariah left her abusive husband Tommy, he used his powers to make J-Lo a bigger star than Mariah. So he stole from Mariah and other artists like Ashanti to build J-Lo up, and cause this feud to continue for decades. So let's get into it. Everybody knows that these two do not get along, and there are a lot of reasons why. We're going to be talking about one of the longest standing feuds in the music industry, and that's between Mariah Carey and J-Lo. Everyone knows that these two don't get along, and there's a lot of reasons why. We all know that the music industry loves to pin artists against each other because it creates controversy, which is attention and more streams and more money. But Mariah and J-Lo's issues go way deeper than that, and it actually seems like a lot of their tension stems from Mariah's ex-husband, Tommy, who was a powerful music executive and incredibly a But when people think about this feud, they think about that moment where Mariah was being interviewed and asked about J-Lo. She said that she didn't know her, trying to insinuate that J-Lo wasn't relevant enough for Mariah to know who she is. And what is with J-Lo? I don't know. Die nicht. Oops. So Mariah opened up a lot about her relationship with Tommy in her book that came out in 2020, The Meaning of Mariah. And when she referred to J-Lo, she called her the one who must not be named. Before we talk about how J-Lo got caught up in this, let's talk about her relationship with Tommy. They married on June 5th, 1993 and divorced five years later in 1998. Mariah wrote about how Tommy was inescapable and monitored her every move. She wrote that it felt like being with Tommy was cutting off my circulation, keeping me from friends and what little family I had. I couldn't talk to anyone that wasn't under Tommy's control. I couldn't go out or do anything with anybody. They even had cameras in the home and they had people watching Mariah so when Tommy wasn't around, he knew what she was up to. Now let's talk about how J-Lo comes into the picture because remember I said Tommy was a big music executive and after he stopped controlling Mariah and her career, he wanted to make sure he could finish her and he used J-Lo to do so. As it turns out, Mariah Carey's ex-husband, Tommy Mottola, is actually at the center of the beef between Carey and Jennifer Lopez. In her 2020 memoir, The Meaning of Mariah Carey, the singer revealed that as she was working on Glitter, she secured a sample from Yellow Magic Orchestra's 1978 song, Firecracker, which she was going to use for her single, Lover Boy. Matola, who was head of Sony Music Entertainment at the time and seemingly bitter about their divorce, found out. According to Carey, after hearing my new song, using the sample I used, Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label, whom I don't know. After years of denying ever having known Lopez, it was easy for fans to deduce that she was the female entertainer in question. That is such a sad story because it seems like exactly what you would expect from Hollywood. I mean, these terrible men using their power to ruin someone's dreams. And that's why Mariah claims that her album Glitter was such a flop because he controlled Sony and every time she tried to do anything special, he would make sure that he could manipulate the system and stop her. Quote, there's no way he would allow me to have huge success after leaving him and Sony. He wasn't going to let me or Glitter shine. And then there was the sabotage. After after hearing my new song, using the same sample I used, Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label, whom I don't know. They used the Firecracker sample and released it before Loverboy. Ja Rule and I wrote a song together too, and next thing you know, Tommy was calling up his manager, Irv Gotti, asking him and Ja to collaborate on a duet for the same female entertainer's record. Irv has even discussed it since in an interview on Day Seuss and Merrow. He knows we just did this with Mariah, and he's trying to with Mariah. This was sabotage, plain and simple. I switched gears and turned from the techno influence to a funkier sample from Candy by Cameo. And after all that, 
Loverboy ended up being the best-selling single of 2001 in the United States. I'm real. Props to Mariah for at least being honest about why she doesn't like J-Lo, but I also wonder how much like say J-Lo had or how aware she was of the situation. Because there's probably no way that she didn't suspect something if they are rushing over to her and forcing her to use this sample for a single, trying to outshine whatever Mariah was going to do. Mariah claimed that Tommy tried to sabotage her by using a sample of her music, which he had used in her hit track, Loverboy, to give to quote, another female entertainer on their label whom i don't know so basically the singer hinted that her ex wanted to use her own music sample for jennifer lopez since that point mariah hasn't held back i mean she's never been one to hold back so she's made it clear that j-lo is wrong for what she did in 22 she appeared on larry king live and larry asked mariah if there's any conflicts in the industry she said there are rivalries but i don't think she has anything to do with me my whole thing is singing writing songs i've been doing this my whole life singing is first and foremost it's a god-given talent that i'm grateful for her thing is something different trying to suggest that j-lo can't really sing which i've heard some people say before but like she has a lot of songs so, i mean she can sing at least you know a little bit does all the attention jennifer lopez gets does that bother is there is there rivalries by the way in this business there are rivalries but i don't think she has anything to do with me i mean my whole thing is singing lighting She's songs an yeah and you know i've been doing this you know my whole life singing is is first and foremost it's a god-given talent that i'm grateful for her thing is something different J-Lo has opened up about her issues with Mariah, and of course, Andy Cohen was the one to get it out of her. During an appearance on Watch What Happens Live, he asked J-Lo if she has any problems with Mariah Carey. She claims that she doesn't have a feud against her at all. I've read the things that she said about me, and they weren't the greatest, but we've never even met. I don't have a feud against her at all. I know from back in the day, I've read things that she said about me <laughs> that were, you know, not the greatest, yeah. but we have never met. Like, we don't know each other. Yeah. I think it's from, like, kind of word of mouth of things that have happened in the past that I'm not really aware of. But I would love to meet her, and I would love to be friends with her. I think she's incredibly talented. J-Lo might be trying to play the bigger person here, but there have been other moments that seem shady. For example, when Mariah Carey was performing at the 2015 Billboard Music Awards, you can see J-Lo was casually scrolling on her phone, not paying attention to Mariah at all. During the Billboard Music Awards, you were caught texting during Mariah's performance. Describe your relationship with Mariah. Okay, first of all, that was not fair then with the texting thing because I watched a lot of it. It was a long performance. Okay, okay. okay. I watched most of it. Okay. I may have looked down for one second. And people were like, look at her, look at her. Wait a minute. <laughs> So J-Lo claims it was an innocent moment, and maybe it is, but she knew that cameras were going to be on her during Mariah's performance because of their feud. Andy Cohen tried to make J-Lo talk about Mariah and asked if she was going to see a Vegas show, would she rather see Mariah or Britney Spears? And she said, Britney Spears because she dances. If you were in Las Vegas for one night and could only see one show, would you rather see Mariah or Britney perform? Uh, Britney because she dances. And while I didn't expect her to say Mariah in the first place, she definitely said that she dances part because Mariah doesn't dance. I mean, I saw her recently at um, LA Pride. To be honest, it wasn't a great performance. Every person there said it was terrible because it was, and she definitely did not dance a at all not even barely moved to be honest j-lo has also called mariah forgetful during an interview she was on wendy williams show who's also as messy as andy cohen it was seemingly a jab at the i don't know her moment and j-lo laughed it off joking that she does say that she's forgetful i guess i don't know we've met many times so i guess at this point they have met because before she claimed that they hadn't met so i guess that was kind of earlier on i didn't see mariah because at the time she wasn't playing she hadn't started yet who but I saw Britney, I saw Shania. No, I'm playing, because that's what Mariah said about Jennifer one time. I'm not trying to start anything. Just... <laughs> she, she does say that. Yeah, she She's does. She's forgetful, I guess. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We've met many times. Uh... <laughs> Going back here, I actually really wonder when this quote was pulled because she's saying that she never met her here. We don't know each other. We've never met. Hmm. Okay. 
Well, there's some inconsistencies here. You guys already know that Mariah wasn't gonna let this moment slide, so she went on to Andy Cohen's show to address the comment, saying, apparently I'm forgivable because I don't remember the fact that it was just, hi, I'm so-and-so, and then move on. You know what? There was this whole thing when you were last on. I there was the moment where you said, "I don't know her," and then that she said, was "I so know long her." Ago, I can't believe people still make such a big deal I out know, of but it. Do you know each other? No. No. Okay. You, here's she the says thing. you know her. Okay, I know she. You know what? I'm very forgetful. Okay. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, I'm forgetful. Yes. Because I don't remember the fact that it was just like, "Hi, I'm so and so," and then move on, and then like. Hi, that's it. Right. If I had never had a conversation with you and someone asked me about you, I'd be like, I don't know him, but he seems cool. Right. Or I don't know him. I love that Mariah runs with this quote because it is kind of funny. And in, in 2016, the paparazzi caught her and she was still saying that she doesn't know her, that she doesn't know JLo, which obviously she does, but she's trying to dismiss her. Mariah, Hi. Can I one autograph. Hi, how are you? How are you? You look so amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. What do you think about people still referencing I don't know her all these years later? I still don't know her. Yeah. Since social media platforms like TikTok have taken moments from the past and made them viral again, Mariah has been forced to talk about this comment. In 2018, she did an interview with Pitchfork where she spoke on the comment saying, I really was trying to say something nice or say nothing at all. I really was. But it seems like there's nothing that can be done that can bring the reconciliation between JLo and Mariah. At this point, we're just waiting for JLo's tell-all book to hear her side of the story. And I'd love to hear what her side is because supposedly Mariah allegedly threatened allegedly threatened supposedly to fight JLo at a party in the 90s saying I'm gonna beat that bitch's ass uh, actress Margaret Choi was asked about the wildest things she's seen in Hollywood and she spoke about this fight I guess in the 90s both JLo and Mariah was at a party where Mariah started to threaten her Quote, she said she was going to beat somebody, that she was going to beat that B words behind. At this party, Mariah was allegedly furious with JLo. And it seems like that was early in JLo's career. And at this point, Mariah probably knew what was going on. And JLo was relatively new to the scene. One source, though, went to OK Magazine and said that the beef is definitely one sided and that JLo is unbothered by Mariah Carey. Whenever Mariah decided to bring up JLo in her memoir, this source claimed that JLo had no interest in reading it. JLo wishes Mariah the best, but she just isn't that interested in reading something about her life. JLo is far too busy focusing on her own life. But Mariah isn't the only person that JLo has been accused of stealing from, because supposedly she stole from Ashanti as well. Ashanti never openly admitted to having a feud with JLo, but she certainly hinted that she was often overlooked because of the success that JLo had. Aside from being accused of stealing the same sample song that Mariah used for Loverboy, JLo was also given songs that were initially intended for Ashanti. In September 2001, JLo released the song I'm Real, which I'm a huge fan of, but supposedly that song was Ashanti's. Ashanti is speaking out on her long-standing feud with Jennifer Lopez, and it looks like these two will never be on the same page due to JLo's long history of stealing from other artists. Once someone goes after you and attacks you and um, intentionally tries to consistently hurt you, at some point, you have to protect yourself. If ever someone wants to apologize or feels like they want to apologize or that they should, I'm open to receiving, you know what I mean? As far as anything after that, for whatever reason, Gotti, who signed Ashanti to his record label, handed the song over to JLo. But it was already after the track was recorded and mixed with Ashanti's vocals, which is why you hear Ashanti in this song, even though it's a JLo song. All right, is it true that Ashanti sung JLo's vocals in the beginning of her career? No, that's not true. So here's what happened. So I wrote I'm Real. Okay. For Jennifer Lopez. And I sung the original version of it as a Demo. reference. Okay. But I sound terrible, of course, on the reference. So Ashanti then sung the reference for Jennifer Lopez. When they mixed down the record, Earth left some of the vocals underneath. So there's definitely some confusion on what really happened with this song and why did JLo get it anyways? Nonetheless, Ashanti has tried to reclaim it and she's even had moments performing it where she's posted up with pictures of her and JLo.
It actually turns out there was a lot going on behind the scenes when it came to Ashanti, and supposedly J-Lo was like hired to replace her. I believe Fat Joe was on an Instagram Live where he spoke about this situation and how he got a call at three in the morning saying like, you know what, we need you to come down. We've got this song and it's gonna have J-Lo. Supposedly they wanted Latinos specifically on this song. Earth and Ja had called me and they woke me up like three in the morning and they said, yo, come down. We made a song for you. It's right after Pun Pass. So when I go to the studio, it was like four in the morning. They play What's Love and you on it. And they was telling me, yo, this is for you and J-Lo. We want the Latinos on this, this and this and that. But you sounded so, that's a fact. Yo, but I never put, knew that. Oh, no, that's a fact. So go ahead. What was you saying? You said that so that was supposed to keep it J-Lo? They had J-Lo. They wanted J-Lo to do it. And I was like, yo, J-Lo, I said, this is the girl we use at Pun. I said, she sound amazing on here. And they was like, yeah, but we want the Latino, you know. And I was like, nah, we leaving her there. And that's how that went down. Yo, do you know I never knew that? No, it's a fact, though. I'm not lying oh to you. Oh my God, yo, this, he stayed pulling records or trying to pull records. But that's not even the first time that J-Lo kind of crossed Ashanti, which kind of speaks to J-Lo's like creativity. She doesn't really ha like, I mean, at this point, her career doesn't seem like a lot of it's original. J-Lo's song, Ain't It Funny, was also rumored to be attended for an Ashanti project, which isn't hard to believe since J-Lo once again decided to keep her vocals on the chorus. There was already a recorded version with Ashanti, but they passed it over to J-Lo, allowed her to record a little bit of it and keep Ashanti's amazing singing. So the song was a hit. Well, I demoed the record for her. That was way, way back. That was before I was signed mm -hmm. to Murder, Inc. Um, and they kept my hook. And, you know, they kept some of the backgrounds and ad-libs and stuff like that. And it was funny. It was a bittersweet because I was really excited because it was J-Lo. You know what I mean? But I was so mad at Earth because I was like, you know I wanted that record. <laughs> I always, ever since I saw Friday, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mary Jane. I was like, you give me that. that I want that record. Ashanti is credited as a background vocalist and songwriter. So she did make money off the song, but it's unfortunate because she wanted to release that on her own album. So now at this point, we've got Mariah Carey, who's claiming that J-Lo is over here, you know, stealing work, and that's kind of Tommy's fault. And then we've also got Ashanti over here claiming that her work was taken by J-Lo. And it seems like that's probably Tommy's fault too, because he was using all of his resources to make J-Lo a big star to wipe out Mariah. So now that we know that Jennifer Lopez is in fact singing her own songs. Let's move to the fact that a lot of you say that Jennifer stole the songs I'm Real and Ain't It Funny Murder Remix from Ashanti. As Ashanti and Irv Gotti have stated once before, these songs were specifically written and created for Jennifer Lopez and Ja Rule. How could Jennifer steal songs that were specifically written for her? Let's take a look. How did that J-Lo record actually happen? You wrote the song for yourself or you wrote it for J-Lo? And, and no, I wrote it for J-Lo. Got it. Okay. I wrote it for J-Lo. I think it was Tommy Mottola had reached out to Irv and they needed a remix for the original record. And... They played me the beat. I think it was seven. They chefed up the Craig Mack. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then um, he was just like, yo, just write something. Write something that goes along with, you know, what's going on with her. And it's sick the power that these music executives have because we recently spoke about Jordan Sparks and how she wrote this song and this album about her ex-boyfriend, but then they took it from her and gave it to Ariana Grande and she made it a hit. So I, I'm really tired of these like record labels like stealing from artists who put their passion into this music and just giving it to someone who really could care less. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye guys.